This social security measure gives at least some protection to 30 millions of our citizens. Year by year, your wage credits build up. Credits that mean earned security for you and your family. Maureen Milner was the first executive secretary to the Social Security Board starting that position in February of 1936. This was a key role in the early organization because Maureen was instrumental in setting up the procedures and functional arrangements for the board's operations. She was a trusted confidant of the early executives serving as a gatekeeper, controlling access to the board and reviewing materials submitted for the board's consideration, returning for additional work those she judged subpar. For historians, Maureen's contributions to SSA are especially important. She established all the early forms of documentation of the board's actions and kept detailed minutes, decisions, and even a verbatim running record of early board discussions. In a compliment to our objectivity and professionalism, board member Arthur Altmaier once remarked that he was never quite sure what the board had decided until he had a chance to read it in Maureen's notes. Maureen began her federal career in 1932 working for the Depression-era Reconstruction Finance Corporation. By 1933, she was an aide to U.S. Senator Robert Wagner, Democrat of New York, whom she would describe as the man who started it all because he introduced the Social Security Bill in the Senate in 1935. In February 1936, she started her storied career with the Social Security Board. She made many significant contributions to our nation, not just in Social Security, but in many other areas as well. Maureen Mulner's oral histories of the period are among the most prized in our collection since she is a marvelous storyteller who knew most of the key players and witnessed many of the important events in Social Security's early history. In November 1999, we had the privilege of meeting Maureen for the first time when she generously donated several photographs from her personal collection to the SSA History Archives. We found her to be just as charming and gracious as age 94 as others said of her when, as a young woman of 31, she began her career with Social Security. Now, as to Social Security, uh, I followed the uh, various stages of the drafting of the bill and its uh, consideration in the Senate and in the House. I should say in the House and in the Senate uh, closely, but I didn't have any connection with the drafting or with the handling of the legislation. However, um, at some stage in that legislative process, I told the senator that this was the program I would like to work with uh, when it was enacted and would appreciate his putting me in touch with uh, the people who would be uh, administering it at the proper time. And then when the, uh, when the law was finally enacted, okay. I read about it in a newspaper, uh, awesome, but some point along the Great Lakes, I had had a um, bad case of shingles. The pressure was great in the senator's office, and I had been sent away to have a little rest. So in August of 1935, I was on this rest cruise on the Great Lakes and read in the newspaper that the president had signed the bill and had appointed the first three members of the Social Security Board. Governor Weinert of New Hampshire, I knew about by reputation. Arthur Altmaier of Wisconsin, I knew about by reputation. But the third man, Vincent Miles, was a name I'd never heard of. Mm -hmm. And he was a lawyer from Arkansas who had been brought into the picture by the then majority leader in the Mr. Senate, Robinson. Mr. Robinson. And then what happened? Well, then I you could, returned. Huh? Yes, I returned shortly after that. And uh, it was early in October, as I remember, that um, somebody phoned to ask that the senator come down that afternoon to meet with the members of the board who wanted to consult with him about their planning for uh, putting this act into operation. And when I told him this, I thought, should I remind him of what I said some time ago? And I decided, no, if he intended to do anything about it, he would do it, and it just wouldn't be wise for me to seem to be nagging him. Later on, very late in the afternoon, he came back and 
called me to come in. I went in. And in a way that was typical of him, which was uh, maybe unfairly, I refer to as his Germanic way of doing things, uh, he couldn't be really graceful and gracious, even when he was being most nice to a person. No, he he's had, trying. <laughs> he had to be sort of gruff about it. So he said to me, well, I hope you won't let me down. All those good things I said about you down there today. <laughs> so then I knew, knew that he had mentioned that I wanted to work for the program. And then you came on board, uh, what was that, October? Uh, that was in October, and... Um, as you know, there weren't any funds made available for um, the Social Security program because of a filibuster yes, of really Senator Long, Long uh -huh, of Louisiana. So uh, there was a little uncertainty as to just when they could start hiring staff. But sometime probably in um, late December or January, I... Um, I think you were on the payroll of the Department of Labor, I guess, in that period when they didn't have an appropriation. Well, I was uh, just going to mention how I happened oh, I to, uh, to come with Social Security, the next step in the process, which uh, sheds a little light on our first chairman. Uh, about this, this day, I was told there was a call for me. And let me um, digress here to say that uh, we people in Washington during those days and months were getting a little bit re-educated as to how... Uh, business people maintained their offices and operated because the National Industrial Recovery Act, the NRA, had brought into government in Washington a great many people from industry. Uh -huh. Now, in the prior times in the executive department, uh, if one wanted to talk to a certain official, one would put in the call either get him directly on the line or get his secretary and then on to the boss. But with these uh, business people, there were several la layers you had to go through. <laughs> and um, we'd certainly sort of gotten reconditioned. Uh, we'd get a receptionist, and then we might get a first secretary or a third secretary, and then a first secretary, and then an administrative assistant before we got through to a very important official like General Johnson, who was head of the NRA. So when I picked up the phone this day, uh, I was surprised to hear a very gentle voice say, uh, Hello, this is Mr. Winant. And I realized it was Governor Winant, the chairman of the Social Security Board. And I said, oh, yes, hello, Governor. I, I, uh, it's nice to have you call me or something to that effect. And he said, I would like to talk with you. And I said, well, I'd like very much to see you, Governor. When uh, would you like me to come? Well, he said, would it be convenient for you to come down now? And I said, why, yes, Governor, it would. I'd be happy to come right down. So I hung up the telephone, and I remember I simply raced. I picked up a copy of the Social Security Act, my pocketbook, didn't even stop to put my hat on, took it in my hand, raced out, sent an office building into a taxi cab, down to the Department of Labor where Governor Winant and the few people who were on the staff had their offices, and waited the usual hour and a half in his reception room before he was free to see me. I knew afterwards that this was was this characteristic? Characteristic of him. He was always running behind schedule. Then when he was free, I was told I could go in, and it was one of those large offices in uh, the Labor Department building. And I walked to the door, and his desk was quite a ways away from the door, and he got up and walked around the desk and toward me. I first was... Um, uh, rather startled by his bushy eyebrows. He had quite a Lincoln-esque look, tall and thin, and that lock of hair over the forehead and very bushy eyebrows. And as he walked toward me around the desk, I thought to myself, why, this man could hypnotize me if he tried. There was such a magnetic quality about his personality. 
We sat down in easy chairs, and he never once asked one fact about me, about my education, about my experience. He talked only about members of the House and the Senate. And after the interview was over, I realized how much he must have learned about what I believed and what I thought about public issues and uh, uh, government legislation mm -hmm. from the way I had discussed the various members of the House and Senate he brought up for discussion. That's a very unusual way to do it, isn't it? Yes, it is. Uh, it was the first time I had ever had that kind of an indirect interview <laughs> with respect to uh, a job. And he hired you right then? Uh, no, he told me that there was no money and that they wouldn't be adding any people to uh, the payroll until uh, there was a uh, an appropriation. But... Uh, Senator Wagner had mentioned that I was interested in working for the program, and he would see that my name was kept uh, uh, under consideration until they were ready to proceed with more hiring. And I actually then was employed later on in January, I believe it was, following an interview with the executive director, Mr. Frank Bain. And then, uh, then you were hired. Yes, I was employed as... Uh, Technical advisor to the Social Security Board was the uh, title of the position. What did that mean? It really meant that I was the secretary to the Social Security Board and uh, to do the usual things that a secretary in the secretariat office does, the uh, handling of the materials for the formal meetings of the board, the preparation of the minutes of the board, the distribution of the minutes to the people who were concerned, the proper codification and handling of the documents which came before the board and um, as time went on the review of the documents that were sent up by the bureaus before they were put on the agenda in order to see that there had been proper clearances with other interested offices and that the material was in shape for the uh, consideration of the board.